Hey guys, today I want to present a solution to the Israel Team Selection Test 2025 Problem 2. At first, let's take a look at the picture. We have given a triangle ABC with in center I and X center IA opposite to vertex A. Point N is defined on the circumcircle omega of triangle ABC such that N is the midpoint of the arc BC containing also the point A. We intersect the line N. Ia with omega again to get a second point T. Now we define a line through the in-center I which is perpendicular to the line Ai and this line should intersect AB in the point F and AC in the point E. In the next step we draw in the circumcircle of ECT and intersect it with IAC in a point Q not equal to C and in the same way the circumcircle of B F T intersects B I A at a point P not equal to B. Our task is to prove that the line P Q passes through the point A prime, which is defined as the point opposite to vertex A on the circumcircle omega. As you may have noticed, I've drawn in already another point into the diagram, and this was because so many circles and lines intersect here, and therefore I want to draw in this point. Indeed, we can prove that these two circles and these two lines intersect at this point and that's the first step we want to do. And therefore let's define the point U as the intersection of lines EF and NT. We want to prove that both of the red circles pass through the point U and we will do this by an angle chase and here I want to use oriented angles modulo 180 degrees. At first let's take a look at the angle CE. U. This is equal to the angle AEU or AEF. Using the fact that EF is perpendicular to AI, we can write this as 90 degrees minus the angle IAE. We know that AN is the exterior angle bisector of the angle BAC and therefore AI is perpendicular to AN. In other words, this angle is just equal to the angle CAN. Using that all the points lie on omega, we can see that this is also equal to the angle CTN, which is now by definition of the point U equal to the angle CTU. And therefore, we indeed see that the points T, C, E, and U lie on one circle. In the exact same way, we can also prove that the point U lies on the circumcircle of F, B, P, T. One point that we always want to include into our picture if we work with in centers and or X centers is the point S, which is defined as the midpoint of the arc BC, not containing the point A. This is because S lies on the line AI. Moreover, we know that S is the midpoint of the circle through B, I, A, C, and I. And in this configuration, we have one more property, namely S is the point opposite to N on omega. The last thing especially implies that the angle N, T, S is equal to 90 degrees. We can see that this immediately gives us our next cyclic quadrilateral, namely, we also know that the angle SIU is equal to 90 degrees and therefore the points T and I lie on the circle of diameter US. Here we have a lot of secants all passing through the point IA and therefore we want to apply power of a point to get even more cyclic quadrilaterals. Using oriented lengths we get that IAQ times IAC is equal by power of a point on the right red circle to IAT times IAU. Now by power of a point on the green circle this is equal to IAS times IAI. This implies that QCIS is also a cyclic quadrilateral. We already know one angle in this cyclic quadrilateral namely the angle ICQ is equal to 90 degrees since CI is the interior 
and CQ, the exterior angle bisector of the angle at vertex C. This immediately gives us that also the angle QSI must be equal to 90 degrees. In the same way, we can also get that PSIB is cyclic, and then we also get here that the angle ISP is also equal to 90 degrees. In other words, the points P, S, and Q are collinear, and the line AI is perpendicular to PQ. Hence, S is one of the intersections of PQ with omega, and since PQ perpendicular to AS, we know that A prime has to be the second one, and therefore we are done.